Good morning again, everyone. Welcome to the conclusion of our time of adoration today and the celebration of benediction together with a special reflection today on this day of the feast of St. Joseph. Let's stand and sing together, O Saving Victim. O Saving Victim, opening wide the gates of heaven to us below. Our foes press on from every side. Your grace supply, your strength bestow. Please be seated. And a special welcome to all who share with us today. Uh, I know there are, of course, beyond us here in the church. We are streaming our entire time of adoration this morning. And I know we have some special friends as far away as Florida who are joining us for this time of prayer today. We've heard this gospel a number of times. And one more, I ask your attention to these words of scripture. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, a righteous man, unwilling to expose her to the shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, He did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary, his wife, into his home. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we've been doing a lot of reflecting about St. Joseph and all of the different parts of his life and all of the ways that in this year of St. Joseph, his spirituality, his ability to dream and Uh, be in contact with God, his protection, protection of Mary initially, protection of Mary and Jesus and their life in Nazareth. And now, as Monsignor Ryan reminded us last week, that Joseph has been now and officially for more than 150 years by the designation of our popes to be the protector of the church, our protector, the protector of this family of God. When we were thinking about having these times of adoration, we were happy to start with Joseph this year as a protector of life. And when you think about that, what I'd like to invite you to think about today is that the protection of life comes because we identify other people as being our family. In fact, it is really entirely the preaching of the gospel that what it means to be family is bigger than we think. When I think of family, I tend to think of mine. My brother, my two sisters, my nieces, my nephews, you know, your family. The people that you sit down to dinner with at Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving, they're your your family, the people that are are closest to you, that you somehow are blood relation to, they're they're your family. And in the gospel though, it's really interesting that, that Jesus constantly wants to break that boundary and tell us about all the others who are family. And in fact, the entire mission of the church to protect life is about including people as family to us that others have little regard for. You could think of lots of examples of that. 
There are the unborn. They are family to us. Real people, people that maybe some find hard to respect or to think of or to judge as human, alive, or real. And yet the teaching of our church says that they are part of our family, just as much as our own children or nieces or nephews. They're real, and we respect them. The poor in this world, they are real family to us. The stranger in our midst. And, and you'll have to notice here, I think this is very important, that, that when we start to include people in our families, that every single one of us, and don't, don't say, oh, not me, because we all have this, at some point says, eh, I don't know if they're really my family. Think of people that you find hard to respect. Think of people that you aren't really that worried about. Think of people who suffer and you say, well, there's somebody else's problem. And we all do this. It's human. It's, it's part of our, our failed and frail humanity that, that we somehow say, this big I can love, that big, I don't know. That's too far. That's too hard for me. But what is the insight of the gospel? That any human being, whether they be saint or sinner, whether they be young or old, whether they be someone who's lived out their human dignity or totally betrayed it in their own acts of sinfulness or violence or whatever, they are still God's children. And somehow, somehow we are called to protect them and to save them and to care of them, just as we have been cared for and protected in our worst moments. You know, when we say something like, God loves me even in my sinfulness, if I really mean that, and if I really think about that, what that really means is that I have some moments in my life where I think God might have just said, enough with you, but that's not what the Lord said. The Lord said, you're still my son. You're still precious in my eyes. You're still one who I love. It's in the story of Jesus and Mary and Joseph. And it begins at that moment which, because of our understanding, our deep understanding in faith, we see the incarnation, the announcement to Mary that she is to be the birth of the Savior. The Holy Spirit has come upon her. The power of the Most High overshadows and a child is conceived. But Joseph's first thought about that is not, this is wonderful. His thought was, this is the worst thing that I could ever imagine happening to me. And he's so good that he is going to, he's going to separate himself from Mary, but do it quietly. He's not going to call her out, not going to expose her to shame but he clearly thinks it's shameful, and he clearly thinks it is the grounds to break his engagement, to end his connection to her. And that's when the dream comes upon him. This is not shameful, Joseph. This is God's will. This is not the end, this is the beginning. This is not something to be feared, but something to be embraced. So take this woman into your home. Make her your wife. Become the father to her son. Name him Jesus, because he is God with us. He will save us. He will redeem us. And so what's the call to every Christian who wants to respect life? Take that other person especially the person that you struggle with, take them into your heart and into your home. Don't fear. Their humanity did not come about because of their idea. Their humanity came about because of God's gift. So respect it, whether they be young or old, born or unborn, whether they be stranger or cousin or family, they are God's family and they are ours. 
And that's what the gospel leads us to. It's an awesome thing. It's so difficult that it's hard to even imagine that we can do it. And by ourselves, we cannot. Just as Joseph could not do it all unless he had his own connection to God. Have no fear. Take her into your home. Make her your wife. Make him your son. It is not mistake, error, or shame. It is the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. God is the one who brings life to every person, to you, to Joseph, to Mary, to Jesus, to the stranger, the sinner, the one we struggle with the most. That's why we have to pray, because that's not the kind of thing we can do on our own. We do it only with the help of God. So let us call upon the great blessing of the Eucharist today to give us that strength. Tantum ergo sacramentum venere mor cernui antiquum documentum no voce da ritui Sensuum defectui Genitori genitoque Auset jubilatio Salusono virtus coque You have given them bread from heaven, containing with it sweetness and delight. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament left us a memorial of your passion, we implore thee that we may so venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always be conscious of the fruit of your redemption, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Blessed be God, this is his holy name. Mary most holy, blessed be her holy and immaculate conception, blessed be her glorious assumption, blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother, blessed be Joseph, her most chaste spouse, blessed be God, his angels, and in his saints. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming to pray today and for uh, all the times you come to pray throughout this beginnings of the year of St. Joseph, the beginning of our Friday morning adorations. And uh, thank you to all who have inspired us to get going on this and to Knights of Columbus and members of the Rosary Society, Adult Faith Formation, and everybody from the parish and beyond the parish who've uh, come together to, to pray. What a, great, what a great strength it is for us, especially in these... Uh, really difficult times, and thanks to all those who are uh, watching and sharing from uh, near or far away. And uh, we have one more week in our mission, uh, the mission that is all about St. Joseph with Father Ed Beck on Tuesday night at seven o'clock mass and his talk on the hidden life of Jesus and Mary and Joseph in Nazareth growing up. And if you missed any part of the mission, you can go to our YouTube page we're so cool, right? We all know where YouTube is, right? <laughs> Maybe a year ago you had no idea, but everybody knows now. And on that YouTube page, you'll see all of the mission talks, the one that I did initially about Joseph's dreams and spirituality. Um, Sister Kathy Stair on my story, our story, the story. A wonderful talk given on Senior George Ryan to connect Joseph's life as protector of the church with the great inspiration of bringing Joseph's name even back to the liturgy that happened at the Second Vatican Council. And Dr. Maria Basil this week, who spoke to us about uh, dreams and poems, a very challenging method, message herself. So you can relive any, isn't that great? You can relive any part of the, the mission that you like. And uh, we'll see you next week, hopefully on other Friday mornings. And remember that today is a feast day and so it was brought to my attention, I didn't recognize this right away, that a feast day, a solemnity, cannot be a day of fast or abstinence. So if you're looking at all that corned beef and thinking like, oh my God, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> okay to deal with it today. <laughs> or to keep the fast and abstinence, if you will. Always a good, good practice, but there is 39 days, I guess, in Lent this year with one more day that is a special celebration. God bless, have a wonderful afternoon.
if you're watching online, I have no idea why we suddenly got a picture of the ceiling instead of the altar, but oh. you heard the prayers anyway. Sorry about that.